I'm Jason Buffington. I'm a senior analyst with the Enterprise Strategy Group covering data protection. Earlier this year, ESG published its research findings on protecting highly virtualized environments, where we looked at such topics as server hypervisor adoption and preferences, general data protection trends, and the specific approaches for protecting and recovering both VMware and Hyper-V environments. Here are some of the findings from that research. Virtualization, while enabling in many other ways, including many new data protection scenarios, also creates challenges in protecting those very same VMs. And those challenges almost assuredly break your legacy or generic approaches to backup. And the higher percentage that you're virtualized, the more those challenges are not only cumbersome, but directly impact your assured ability to recover your data. In ESG's data looking at the top challenges for protecting virtualized environments, visibility caused by virtualization abstraction is five of the top six problems in protecting virtual environments today. Many folks are dissatisfied with their existing solutions or non-confident in their ability to recover because they just don't know if they're protected or not. So you should be looking for solutions that are optimized or specifically designed for protecting the modern virtualized infrastructure that many of us have. You should also be looking for protection solutions that offer equitable capabilities between both VMware and Hyper-V. Why? Because you are almost assured to have both, either today or in the future, probably sooner than you think. In the same ESG research, we looked at multi-hypervisor usage trends, and while it certainly used to be a one-horse, one-vendor race in server virtualization, Windows Server 2012, now with R2, arguably offers feature parity, effectively commoditizing the compute hypervisor stack for many. Now these days, the discussion is more of a management stack and agility decision over a number of cores or an amount of memory per VM discussion. If your solution only backs up VMware and or provides marginal support for Hyper-V, then you could end up being just as stuck as the folks in the last decade whose solutions only backed up physical servers. Frankly, the only folks that rule doesn't apply to is VMware and their VDP offerings, which are for the devout VMware uh, exclusive shops. Every other solution really ought to have equal agility uh, in protecting VMs on both platforms. Now, the same ESG research looked at what applications were being virtualized. It wasn't that many years ago that folks were saying virtualizing this server would be okay, but I could never virtualize that one for CPU numbers or memory or I.O. requirements or maybe just politics. But thankfully, those days are over. Modern compute hypervisors enable you to virtualize servers of nearly any size and with negligible differences in performance. That said, you should be sure that your data protection solution works with VMware VADP and Microsoft VSS in such a way that those virtualized application servers, particularly transactional applications like Exchange and SQL, get what they need to be protected and groomed correctly and then restored with some level of application awareness. Now, speaking of agility and awareness, that is really the new field of differentiation among virtualization protection solutions. Everyone, well, almost everyone, can reliably back up a VM or a bunch of VMs on a specific host. Being able to back them up isn't the challenge anymore, assuming that those vendors are staying current with VADP and VSS technologies. The real background today is how fast can I restore that VM? Can I restore the VM from the backup storage pool without first recovering the VMDKs or the VHDs to a production host? And then, now that I'm up and running, transparently move that VM while it's spinning back onto a more suitable host. That's agility. Now, put that software feature in a solution where the backup storage can actually leverage optimized storage, like a flash cache or an optimized performance enhancing tier, and you've got something very cool. Similarly, can I integrate my backup tools and the snapshot capabilities of the primary storage so that I can invoke near instant recoveries where the VM lives as well as where it's protected? In the same ESG research, we looked at supplementing virtualization protection with storage technologies and in fact, less than 10% of environments only do VM backups. The other 9 out of 10 are either doing or looking to do snapshots, replication, or a combination of those as part of their broader data protection strategy along with VM optimized backups. Now that said, why should you have to use separate UIs with siloed management policies and such? Instead, look for solutions that integrate backups and snapshots. So let's recap. Virtualization makes several aspects of IT easier, but assuring protection and recoverability isn't always one of them. If you're using older legacy methods and trying to protect highly virtualized environments, you're almost assuredly missing VM-optimized features that contemporary solutions have. 
You are probably struggling with overcomplex or unwieldy backup engines, which likely puts you in that visibility gap that we discussed earlier, and you are probably paying more than necessary, particularly considering the legacy licensing models that don't always line up with how modern infrastructures are monetized. So look for solutions that are optimized for virtualization-specific scenarios and that are easy to use. Design for virtual environments should recognize that we live in a multi-hypervisor world and while we're at it, the solution needs to recognize that VMs often contain business critical applications like Microsoft SQL and Exchange that require that special handling during their backups and restore scenarios. And remember, we don't do this for backups, we do this for restores and modern virtualization protection solutions are focused on restore. Hopefully that list narrows down the options quite a bit for you and after that look for other differentiating capabilities around retention or integration with management stacks. Start assessing the TCO ROI value and then listen to what your peers are saying from their experiences. No matter how thorough your evaluation is or how effective their marketing is, listen to others' hands-on experience will always give you better information for a better decision. That includes reviews from the ESG Lab technical validations as well as user forums and communities. I hope this was helpful. I'm Jason Buffington with the Enterprise Strategy Group signing off. Thanks for watching.